Uh, I'm going to replace the radiator on this 2006 Nissan Altima with the 2.5 four cylinder. That's going to be the same for 02 to 06. Any year after that, it's probably similar, but uh, this specifically is for the 02 to 06 with the 2.5 four cylinder engine. So, obviously, you're going to want to do this on a cold engine, or if it's hot, then at least let it cool down for a half hour or more. You don't want to get burnt. You also don't want, you know, exploding coolant in your face when you go to take this out. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and take this out because obviously that's going to be in the way. So it's just these little plastic clips. You got to put a flathead screwdriver, one under each side, pry up from both sides at the same time, and they'll pop out. So this is the way it's supposed to work. You pull the little pin up, and that unlocks that. Um, this may be stubborn to get out, but if it is and you don't want to mess with it, you can just pull all the pins out all the way across, and then once all your lock pins are out, then you can just yank up on it, and these will pop out. Uh, you might bust a few. I'm having issues with that one. Depends on how dry rotted they are and how seized up they are. This one's different, so likely some of these have been replaced from being busted in the past, perhaps, but... Once you get all these lock pins out, then you can just yank this whole thing up out of here. So obviously this air intake tract here would be connected to your air box. I have a cold air intake on there, so my air box is no longer there. But you will just have to pop it off of your air box and take it out. This is the back side of your radiator here. So obviously you got a big pipe that's going to go on there, a big pipe that's going to go on there. That's where you fill it. Um, if you have a manual transmission, it may not have these... Well, a lot of radiators, you, you buy, at least if you buy them online like I do, they come set up for either. Uh, most of the time, what this is, this is an oil cooler or uh, oil or trans cooler, one or the other. And you have lines run into this, whether it be an oil cooler or a transmission cooler. The lines will run that fluid into the radiator in, in one way and back out the other. Uh, typically, it's for the trans. Some radiators have oil for the engine. Some radiators have a trans cooler. Uh, not sure what this one is yet, but if it's a trans cooler, usually if it's a standard, a manual transmission, it will not have that. Usually it's the automatics, which this one is an automatic. So you can see these have little caps here. If you have, say, a manual transmission to where it does not have the cooler, then you'll just leave these capped and not use it. Or if it doesn't come with caps, you'll just have to cap it off with something. Um, but mine's an automatic and I'm pretty sure that's a trans cooler so we'll more than likely be hooking that up but we'll see in a second uh, sometimes there are oil coolers for the oil for the engine I've actually seen both before where the radiator did not only coolant for the engine but oil for the engine and transmission lines so those were a real nightmare but so you're gonna have to detach the cooling fans on the back of the radiator to transfer to the new one which obviously means you're going to have to move this pipe to pull it out. So at this point, we need to drain all the uh, radiator fluid. All right, so your drain plug is on the passenger side of the car. And that's it right there. You'll have to use a real big Phillips screwdriver to turn that to drain it. Now, while you're draining this, you want to crack and just take off your radiator cap. Because if you leave it on, it can create a vacuum to where it won't drain properly. It also drain much faster by taking the cap off. Not sure how much this system holds, but you want to be prepared to catch up to three or four gallons of coolant. So I got another container in case that one gets full. So while that's draining, I'm going to go ahead and work on this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Squeeze it. Slide that back off the plastic. That way you can pop the... The, uh, tube off so anyway slide it all the way back so you can pop that off now's a good time to inspect everything I got a cut there so that's something I'm gonna need to keep an eye on in the future to make sure that doesn't start leaking or just replace the pipe um, but now you can pop it off now a lot of times that was probably the easiest one I've ever removed a lot of times they're seized up on here the rubber will basically like melt to the plastic and uh, what you got to do you might need to in efforts to not completely butcher it, uh, sometimes you can pry around the edges with a flathead, wiggle it a bunch, you know, because it's really stuck on there. 
and if you're uh, patient and thorough enough you can get it off without boogering it up but do the same on your bottom one down there once the radiator's done draining or you're going to get fluid coming out of that pipe on you remove these top two mounting brackets uh, typically they're a 10 millimeter which is the case here so i'm going to work on getting these fans out now you're going to have to move this out of your way uh, mine just broke it's the same little ideal as that it's just really scaled down um, so mine broke oh, there goes another piece Ugh. again it might be the same situation with these where it's really seized on you got to work at it to get it off um, you're going to need to, let's see here, unplug where the fan's plugged in. You got one here, you got one here, and it's mounted here. You're going to have to cut or pop this off. And the same here, that way you can pull this wiring harness out of the way. You press down on this gray button right here, and that'll depress this entire thing. It clears that lock tab. And then you'll be able to pull it out. Uh, it's probably going to stick. You really want to try not to pull on these wires. Kind of hard to avoid. But also if you grab on the side of it with channel locks, you might bust it. So maybe a combination of the two. Just be careful not to break anything or pull the wires out. So you depress that tab and then it'll pop out. And it's going to be the same on this one. i got to push that tab down. And then work on getting it out of there. So all the clips... You can see there, that's what they look like. If you depress the edges in while it's plugged in, you might be able to pop it out without breaking them like I did. So that's how you do that. Uh, we still got one down here and one there. And I got those last two out, so then this whole thing will just pull up. Just remember which wire goes to which fan. Obviously, in this case, it's pretty obvious, but not always. And then, I believe it's just... These two mounting bolts for this, uh, those might be 10 mil again. Yep. Should be those two and then it'll pull out unless there's some hiding down there. We'll find out. All right, so I popped that bottom one off, even though the radiator stopped draining a good bit came out of there, so be aware of that. All right, well, I don't want to have to try to remove the battery and battery tray, and then this thing's attached to the battery tray, so leave this connected for now. Make sure it's unplugged. Uh, I gotta get those two other coolant hoses that we discussed down there out. There's a little clip there. Well, yeah, you have to pop that out. Check the other line, see if there's anything somewhere. I don't believe so. That looks like a direct shot, yeah. So you have to pop this one out. I'm not sure 100% if this is trans fluid or oil yet. Uh, but we'll find out when I pop this off. So, again, just got those little clamps like what was here that broke. Squeeze them open or break them off. Pop the line off. Not sure what's coming out of here yet. Anyways, once I have these two lines off, uh, then I can just pull the radiator with the fans out as a whole assembly. And then once I have it out, uh, then you can take the fans off. So, you could even leave it bolted up until then. So, let me get those two lines off there and that's that's what we'll do. All right, so I popped the first one off. I don't know if you can see the red, but that is in fact the transmission cooler. So I bent the line up. Ugh, I'm dropping my phone here. I'm trying to do the same with the other to try to keep all the fluid from draining from the, the lines and the transmission and whatnot. I still gotta pop this one off here. So just try to tuck them up so they don't, you don't lose all your transmission fluid. All right, so I got both lines disconnected, so now I should be able to pull this up as a whole assembly. I may need two hands for that, but it'll just a little finessing and wiggling. So there she is. Came out pretty easy. I was just getting caught right here a little bit. Uh, check your lines again. Not much came out of that one. It's all trying to come out of here, so... After you pull that out, you might knock your lines down like I did. So that's it. The radiator is out. So that wasn't too bad. So basically, installation is reverse of removal. I've already unbolted these fans here. So you just need to transfer these to your new radiator. Put everything back in the way it came out. And that's what I'm going to do. So 
So you hook it into the bottom like that. Screw it back in. I ran into a little issue here. It's like the holes here weren't long enough because both these stopped at the same point and they just kept turning like they were stripped out. I'm gonna chalk that up to a uh, cheap eBay radiator, which it is. So uh, if you have that happen, stop before you completely strip it out. That way there's still something holding it on there. So I ran into that issue, but it's on there. So we'll be able to reinstall it now. Yeah, we're uh, still losing fluid. It'd be best if you could tie this up to something like that. It's still leaking on me a little bit. But check your uh, trans fluid when you're done. Uh, uh, tie that up on this O2 sensor. That way you don't lose fluid like that. There we go. Or do that. Uh, be careful bend them too much, though, especially if they're brittle. You don't want them to crack. So... If you uh, lose very much fluid, definitely top it back off the amount that you lost. Don't use the dirty fluid. So anyways, I'm going to pop this thing back in here and get everything hooked back up. So there's little pegs on the bottom right there. So when you stick it back in, there's little holes there. You just stick the pegs back in. All right, I got everything hooked back up. As far as the radiator goes, I still need to put that intake track back on. Um, but got my cooling fans plugged back in. Top hose back on, bottom hose, uh, the trans cooler lines, mounting bolts. So I'm ready to fill it up. As far as putting those hoses back on, especially on these ones, you want that clip to be right behind that nipple. So if it goes to slide off, it catches that and stops. So you don't want to clamp it up here. You want the clamp right behind that. Same goes on these on the edge. Put the clamp right behind it. Uh, but if you just pay attention to your lines, you'll see where the old ones were sitting before you took them off uh, this i'm gonna have to replace this is not such a big deal because it's at the top but this is a pressurized system obviously uh, so if you have a busted clamp you definitely want to replace it because you don't want a leak or god forbid it shoot the line off but since this is just an overflow return should be fine on that uh, actually i might have a little hose clamp but you know i'll even zip tie it for now two zip ties make sure that doesn't come off but i'm going to need to replace that so anyways, we're ready to add coolant now. Um, you're going to have to burp the system. I don't see a bleeder valve on this anywhere, which those don't always work anyways. So it's best to park on a hill if you can. If not, jack it up like I have. The higher, the better. What this will do is help burp the system. So it'll let the coolant, if you got it high enough, it'll go into the block and it'll basically just fill up and push all the air out. If you do it with it's flat, you might get some air bubbles in there. Uh, either way, you're probably going to get some air bubbles, so we're going to have to keep an eye on this, and I'll go over that in a second. So I'm going to start adding the coolant, and um, you want to pour it pour it on the edge and slowly. That way it's not like, because you don't want to create un any, any unnecessary air bubbles, because you're already going to get air bubbles that you got to get out. Uh, you get an air bubble in the system, the car will overheat because it's not pumping the fluid through the radiator like it's supposed to. All right, so I got it filled up. Um, should go without saying, but if you're using concentrate, then mix it with water to 50-50%, or you can just buy the pre-mix that's already 50-50. Uh, but anyways, don't forget to top off your reservoir here. I'm going to leave the lid off of that and the cap off the radiator. I'm going to start the car, and uh, as the car warms up, it'll start cycling this and hopefully push any air bubbles out. Uh, you're going to go back and forth from watching the temperature on your temp gauge to make sure it doesn't overheat in case there's still air in the system and watching this and you'll see like bubbles popping out and stuff and um it will likely some of it will overflow on the ground and such so be prepared to catch that as well um but that's what we're going to do you're going to start it let it warm up and uh, you start seeing bubbles come out now i've done this before to where it literally took no time at all to, to burp the system like it was ready to go right off the bat. Usually that's the case with trucks because the radiator sits higher than the engine. Uh, with cars, it usually takes a little longer. So, I, I've again, I've done it to where it only took like a minute. A few air bubbles came out and that was it. And I've also been at this for two hours. So, raising the front end of the car up is going to help. And uh, I'm going to start this thing, let it get warmed up and see what happens. 
All right, so typically uh, nothing will happen for the first few minutes till it starts to warm up and the thermostat will open and then it'll allow it to start pulling coolant and then it'll start flowing through the system. Uh, so basically as it takes this, if it goes down, uh, I would I would wait, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds because it might bubble back up. Of course, be careful also, don't stick your face right over this in case it shoots out in your face. Um, but it, it should start drink. well, it may, it may start drinking it and take it down and then you just keep topping it off and then you might have bubbles come out and uh, assuming the bubbles are coming out, like I said, it's going to take a while until it warms up until you start seeing that. Um, you'll have to, whatever it splashes out, you just let it keep going until the bubbles stop, top it back off, see if there's any more bubbles. Some might splash out. When it stops, top it back off. You need to go back and forth and check your temperature gauge the whole time. Make sure it's not overheating. If it's getting too hot, shut it off. And also sometimes shutting the car off, letting it set for 10 seconds, starting it back up, sometimes will push more bubbles out than with it continuously running. So you just gotta play with it until you see no more bubbles. And then once you think you're good, you go down the road, but you don't wanna go very far from the house or wherever you're working on it at. In case it starts to get hot, uh, that way you can pull off the side of the road, shut it down, you know, get supplies or, or get it back to the house before it gets too hot. Do it all over again, so been running for about 60 seconds now so far nothing's happening and uh, we'll wait till it starts getting warmed up and we'll see what happens see it's starting to wiggle a little like it might want to take it but we'll see what happens okay we're about two minutes here I just saw the first few bubbles you can see the levels rising as it's, it's trying to push the air bubbles out there goes a little one it's probably going to overflow now, like I said. Yep, there it goes. Just trying to push air out. Try to squeeze that hose there. Sometimes if you squeeze it and release it, that can help push some of the air out. Suck fluid back in. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Also, if you squeeze it too fast or too much, you might put actually more air in the system than what you're getting out. So while I'm waiting, if you want to see the header install or the cold air intake install, uh, brand new brakes, a few other things I've done to this. I'm about to do a real wheel bearing, possibly some other things. Uh, anyways, if you're interested in any of that, just go check out the uh, Ultima playlist on the channel. Uh, so I'm just sitting here watching the uh, temp. Sometimes if you give the car a few revs, that might push some air out too. And so we're just going to keep an eye on it and see what happens. There you saw some bubbles there. Woo, there goes some shit. Uh, revving it up makes your water pump spin faster, so it'll help push some of that out. <laughs> so anyways, the whole time, make sure you're watching your temp gauge. Make sure it doesn't get too hot. If it does, shut it off. I'm actually going to shut it off here real quick, even though it's not that hot. See if anything else comes out. Well, it's kind of hard for me to... You probably won't see it on camera here if it does. <sighs> All right, this is really hard. So if you were over there, you might have seen some bubbles come out. You might not have. Just wait like 10 seconds. And then start it back up. Another way to test it, once you're at full op temp, which we are, if you previously had good heat, you didn't have any issues, then it should blow hot. Right now it's not, so that means there's still air in the system uh, because the coolant is not getting to the uh, heater core, which is what the air blows over. The heater core gets hot from the coolant. That's how you get heat. Right now we're dead cold, so there's still air in the system. There's no coolant going to the heater core. So if I can't get it worked out in the driveway, then we'll actually have to drive it 
like you said, don't go very far from the house at all. And uh, hopefully work the air out of it. I have to keep an eye on the temperature gauge the whole time. Make sure we don't get too hot. If we do, make it back before it's too late or shut it off on the side of the road for uh, 30 seconds. Start it back up and see how it does. But yeah, right now I definitely have air. I had heat prior to this. Currently I have no heat, so uh, there's definitely air in the system still. All right, so I'm about to take it down the road. I haven't had much luck in the driveway here. Not a whole lot of air really came out. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, it's always a good idea to replace your cap. It's pressurized. So if you're replacing a radiator, it's a good idea to replace the cap too. And get this thing on there. Wait. That was weird. Didn't go on the same. Anyways, I'm going to make sure I'm topped off there on my reservoir. New cap on. I'm going to go down the road and see if anything changes. Maybe we'll get it mixed up some and get that air out. So that's pretty normal temp for me at least right there. It's about where it used to sit. Go down the road see what happens. I'm not uh, too happy about how little air came out. Like I said, that could be good meaning that there wasn't much in there it could be bad meaning that I didn't get anything out I got heat right now as soon as I started moving as soon as I stopped the heat will go away again Gotta get this air worked out so like I said some systems work better than others I've uh, been at it for two hours before with other cars where as soon as I started driving like now it would try to overheat and I'd stop shut it off start it back up it'd be like it would some of the air would come out and then it, it's just a nightmare but uh that's what you gotta go through so far so good it doesn't seem to be rising I got heat which means uh the fact that I didn't have heat and then I now have heat it's at least cycling through the system some but that doesn't mean that all the air is out yet so I'm gonna drive it around for a while keep an eye on it, romp on it a few times, come back and see if I maintain heat. Alright, so as you can see, I have some more bubbles coming out there. Uh, I took a two mile loop around the house, didn't have any issues with overheating. Um, however, my heat wasn't great. So, I brought it home, let it cool off for a little bit, pop the cap back off. You gotta be careful doing that because the pressure could be built up and shoot out in your face. Uh, so, you would, well, you would want to let it cool down all the way. I didn't, but. Uh, and then I noticed that uh, there was some room for some more coolant, so I put about another quart of coolant in, roughly, uh, to fill it clear up to the top. And then I sat there and had, held revs, as you just saw, and I had that frothy crap coming out and little bubbles popping out too. So I think that was the remainder of it. Uh, like I said, I didn't have any overheating issues or anything while driving it. But my heat sucked now my heat is nice and hot so that last little bit of air even driving it around didn't get it out so i had to again pop the cap off after i let it cool down for a minute uh, i topped off the level sit there and held revs and yeah now this it's like burning my hands so she's good to go said if you had great heat before and you don't now then it's because there's still air in the system you can keep working on it to burp it out like i did it might come back eventually on its own after driving around enough. The most important thing is just make sure while you're driving around after you do this first few drives, keep an eye on that temp gauge. Make sure it doesn't overheat because if you get a big enough air bubble in the system, it will overheat. But anyways, that's how you do it. Yeah, this is like burning my hand now. So I'm 100% good to go now. Like I said, it may be easier for you. It may be harder. I've had to do this for like two hours before, but... I'm only about 10 minutes in here, so that's good. 
Uh, if this video helped you out, make sure you like it. Again, if you want to see the other stuff I've done to the car and anything I'll be doing, check out the Ultima playlist. Um, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.